you're getting the benefits of train training, but you're eliminating that the micro trauma of the muscle tears. You know, if you look at what Arnold Schwarzenegger did when he was in his 20s and 30s, drastically different than what he's doing in his 60s and 70s. And so what we want to tell people is, hey, whatever your level of uh, fitness, strength, uh, mobility uh, is now, we want you to maintain that level, at least that level, 10 years in the future. Stephen Munatones, I am so happy and thrilled to welcome you to The Better Show. We are going to talk all about BFR today, blood flow restriction. Welcome to Better. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. A pleasure to be here. Yeah, we started to get, in the pre-chat, we started getting into some juicy topics. And I was like, we got to stop and press record and get into this yeah. show. So we're going to make sure that we, I want to talk a little bit about women and athletics as we were just uh, chatting yeah. about, but at yeah. for just to set a precedent for today's conversation, mm -hmm. uh, mention that we're talking about BFR today. Let's just define what that is. Cause that might be very new to, uh, many of the listeners that are listening today in terms of what blood flow restriction is, how that might be a tool that we might think about for, um, muscle hypertrophy, and, and we'll kind of get into that, but let's just define what, what is BFR? What's blood flow restriction training? So blood flow restriction is actually a misnomer, but that being what it is, what it is, is basically putting bands on your upper arms or upper legs. And in the case of katsu, those bands actually inflate and deflate, inflate and deflate using a certain algorithm. And that actually keeps blood in the limb. So it may, and I have one on my my arm here, I don't have it on this arm. So I have one arm on one arm on and one arm without. And you can see, I hope. Yeah, um, there's a difference. In there is color. a big difference. What's happened, this is my normal skin color. And this is what we call our katsu color. You can see it's, it's rosy, it's pink here. What's happening are these bands inflate and deflate. And what happens is the blood goes in normally and is being slowed down temporarily every 30 seconds. And what that does, it actually enables the uh, muscular tissue, the ligaments, the tendons, uh, and the bone in your, in your arm to be in a condition where it thinks it is, and it is actually working out. Even though I'm sitting here talking to you, this arm, metabolically speaking, is working out this arm is just in what we call homeostasis, just hanging there. So that is blood flow restriction, the ability to modify blood flow in and out of the arm in order to affect change, metabolic uh, biochemical reactions in the body that will e effectively um, uh, replicate vigorous exercise. And so with the restriction, are we, is it arterial restriction? Is it venous occlusion? What is happening no. there? Yeah. So what's happening is that this is, this is sort of a band and it's uh, without my arm. And this band has an internal air bladder inside and it inflates for 30 seconds and deflates. Even when it's inflated, the arterial flow, for, so the flow from your torso out to your hands or feet continue unimpeded. The blood is going in, but when that band inflates slightly, and it's only a slight um, inflation, it means it's compressed, that the venous return or the blood from your hand or feet back to your torso is slowed down. It's like a, a, damning, a, a, a minor damming effect on your, on your upper arm or upper leg for 30 seconds. And so that venous return is modified. That's what the scientists and doctors say. Okay. So there's this damning effect where the venous return back to the heart is being slowed down. Correct. And then for the muscle that is being where we have the bands on it, what is the mechanism of action? What is the, you mentioned there's this metabolic, it's almost like your arm is working out, you know, right now you're passive, you're not right. like doing a bicep curl, right. but there's this metabolic change or effect that's happening in the arm with the band on. What is hap What is the metabolic effect that's happening? That's going on. There's, there's two effects, two two fundamental effects. One, as you can see with my hand. So now my hand is even redder. Yeah. And the reason why is the pressure increases incrementally. So this hand, this forearm, you can sort of see the difference here. Yeah. This forearm here, what's happening is all the capillaries there expand and contract, expand and contract. 
at a greater degree than normal. So the, the capillary tissue here is actually expanding more so, very much similar as if I was doing push-ups, as if I was running, as if I was lifting weights. I'm just sitting here. But when the vascular tissue expands, you have uh, some effects such as the production of nitric oxide, the production of vascular endothelial cells. You're actually making your vascular tissue more elastic, more pliable. It's enabling uh, or it's improving the blood circulation in, in your extremities. And that's very important if, let's say, you have an injury, you have tendonitis, you have a broken bone, you have a cut on your arm. And all of these things, improved blood flow helps. That's effect number one. Effect number two is when you do slight movement, and in this case, I'm just talking with my hands, but I could be holding a book. I could be walking my dog. I could be folding clothes. I could be typing on my laptop. All of those micro movements are leading uh, or are creating a buildup of lactate very much like if you're lifting weights, building up uh, lactate uh, very mildly, very uh, slowly and gradually in the arm. When that happens, a signal is sent to our brain through our central nervous system. And then the brain believes that this arm is working out vigorously. When that happens, then it releases a, a cascade of hormones. And those hormones enable the muscle to become more toned, uh, stronger, more pliable, whatever exercise, whatever protocol you follow, it will, and we have hundreds, it will allow the individual to improve themselves as, as they see fit. Okay. So we have this accumulation of lactate, which is going to turn right. on some of the anabolic signaling pathways, let's say to activate growth. So you mentioned, yes. Uh, it's going to send a signal up to the brain. The brain's can say, hey, this arm is working harder than my right arm is working harder yes. than my left arm, right. let's say. And then you're going to have this cascade of hormones, you said, that are going to uh, tone and increase. Is it, is it a hypertrophy of the muscle that we're looking at? Or is it an improvement in strength, both one it, or the other? Yeah, it, it can be both. It could be one. And the, it depends what sort of exercises, what sort of movements you do. So for example... If someone has a cast on their arm, let's say they broke their arm. In this case, they can't actually, their, their arm is in a cast, it's frozen in place. Right. So what we do there is we just ask the individual to, you know, sort of grip a, a ball or whatever, or they hold their arm in place. In this case, you actually, the effect will be an increase in the muscle size. Let's say that you're a baseball pitcher, an ice hockey uh, player, a golfer, you can actually use these bands in the motion that you're actually doing. So whether it's a golf swing and you want to increase your club head speed or you're throwing a ball or kicking a ball, whatever the case is, when you have the bands on, you're strengthening the muscle in the actual movement that you're trying to achieve. So instead of, let's say, if you're an athlete doing a bench press or a shoulder press or something, Let's say you simply want to uh, be a better golfer, swimmer, rower, uh, baseball player, basketball player, whatever, whatever you have, you put these bands on in the actual performance of your activity. And if you're doing, let's say, if you have some kind of injury, then whatever your physical therapist says, you can do those same sort of exercises as you do. In, the, in these cases, you're increasing your functional strength. You're actually increasing the strength, the speed, the power of whatever movement that you're trying to do. And that could be something as simple as a, a track start. It could be something as simple as a soldier, you know, climbing a fence faster or climbing a rope faster. So depending on what the individual wants to do, you know, we have our oldest user is 104. In her case, she simply wanted to walk upstairs up to her second floor up and down the stairs because she hadn't been able to do that since her 90s. So in this case, all we had her start to do is walking in place. After she started to walk in place, then she started to take one step down, one step down. And the band, so, sorry, was around her leg, I'm assuming. Yeah, right? in this case, yes. Right. Sorry, yeah. in this yeah. case, yeah. yeah. The bands were on her, her legs uh, yeah. and in her upper thigh in the case that you're trying to increase your leg strength. Okay. 
So we have bands for the arm, we have bands for the leg. So right. what I think you've been describing, although you've been dancing a little bit uh, into more of the weight training, but you've been talking a little bit about passive applications of, let's say, passive BFR. Like you're sitting right. here now, you're not, there's like micro movements that you've been talking about. Maybe yeah. I'm typing, maybe I'm holding a book. Right. Um, but there's also, which is which is awesome actually for, you know, the 95 or the 104 year old who wants oh. to go up and down the stairs, maybe for an elder individual or as you mentioned if someone has broken their arm and they're rehabbing like I remember uh in I remember hearing about BF like not paying too much attention to it honestly but there was I remember having a patient with a ACL injury and using so there was some care that I was right. um giving this patient and he was also getting some care uh, I can't remember if it was a physio or an osteopath um and he was using BFR uh as part of his rehab and he right. really felt like uh, and I don't, I don't know if it was the Katsu yeah. uh, bands. It might've been just like the Amazon special. Like uh, I don't remember yeah, what yeah, he was using, yeah. but he really felt like it was augmenting his recovery. Yeah. But you've also mentioned things like push-ups, and, um, we were talking in the pre-chat, um, about women and weight training and title yeah. nine. So I thought yeah. we might kind of talk a little bit about the application that BFR or cat or the katsu bands that we're talking. About. I don't know if those are those two words interchangeable when we say katsu and BFR. Is that the right? Am I using the right terminology there? Katsu is a uh, katsu was the original um, BFR uh, uh, when when myself and Dr. Sato brought katsu to the United States. It was in two thousand and one. Although okay. in Japan we had there was there was katsu for for a few decades before that. The first time that katsu was used actually in an Olympic Games was 1988 in the Seoul Summer Olympic Games. Mm -hmm. And they've been used every summer and winter um, games after that. However, it wasn't until I think 2014 to 2016 that when we started to get more and more traction, there were more and more people who saw this band with their patented, the, everything is patented. So like anything that's popular, whether it's tissue paper or Rolex watch or whatever, Tiffany, whatever the case is, there are always people who want to replicate. Those people distinguish themselves uh, from Katsu as BFR. Uh, they I generally see. use a, a tourniquet and the tourniquet, uh, uh, it's, it's effective. I'm not denigrating them. It's effective. However, this tourniquet does occlude, partially occlude flow, blood flow in the arm and back. So while ours allows it arterial flow to continue unimpeded, theirs actually partially occludes. Now, between 2004 and 2014, we did a very intense research project with over 12,000 patients in a University of Tokyo hospital with a team of cardiologists because we knew that if we could demonstrate that cuts can be used um, safely and effectively, with people with cardiac issues, then it should be safe across the board. And we did that in prior to launching outside of Japan. So when we finally launched in Japan, we were launching as our brand name, which is Katsu, which simply means additional pressure. So you might've heard of Katsu, uh, I'm sorry, Shiatsu. She means hand, Atsu means pressure. So a kind mm -hmm. of massage. Mm -hmm. Katsu, K-A means additional, Atsu means pressure. So these bands, we the brand name is Katsu, but in fact, Katsu is a Japanese word that simply means additional pressure. And just um, explain for me how the Katsu bands don't have arterial occlusion, but something like a BFR band does. So there's BF that, that we have this arterial occlusion, this venous occlusion, like how is, how are the two different? Like, how do you maintain arterial blood flow? Is it, is it that pulsatile, um, pattern that you were describing before? That is part of it. And the other part of it, and I, I know it's, it'll be sort of hard to see here. This is a band and it's inflated okay. and you can see the oval shape yeah. that the band is taking. That means that the pressure on the artery is riding along the ridge of this inflated band. This band took us years to create because the band inflates in only one direction and it inflates in a, in a uh, oval shape. Dome shape, yeah, yeah. Yes, and because of that, and because of the structure of the anatomy, 
of the of the human arm. This is the reason why it allows the arterial flow in and the venous flow to be slowed down coming back. It's because of the shape of the band and because the actual pressure ridge on the vein and artery, artery going in, vein coming out, is a very, very narrow one, one and a half millimeter width uh, pressure. And, and, the, and the pressure is not, I mean, I've had this band on now for, I don't know, uh, 20, 25 minutes, and it's, there's no problem. I, if I needed to do a push-up, I could do a push-up. If I needed to throw a baseball, I could do, do that. So there's, it, the pressure that we're applying is very mild, but the amount of capillaries that the human body has, they're very, very small. And if I took all the capillaries in my body, lined them up end to end, that would wrap around the earth two times. So the actual diameter of any given capillary is very, very small. And the brilliance of Dr. Sato who created Katsu and the, the team of cardiologists that, that worked with him and me, the beauty of that is they, they understood the absolute importance of capillaries, the, the smallest uh, blood vessel in the body, in the overall health of the human body from head to toe. That was their brilliance. You know, as cardiologists, they, of course, they focus on the heart, on the arteries and, and the veins, arteries taking the blood from the heart, veins bringing the blood back to the heart. That is their primary focus of their medical education and, and practical surgical experience. However, they also understood the, the, the ubiquitous nature of capillaries. They're all over our body. And by modifying the blood flow, the perfusion of blood in the capillaries, they understood that that actually could lead to a hormonal response and actually increase um, elasticity of vascular tissue, which leads to improved blood flow. That was their brilliance. Okay. I'm going to come back to hormones in a second. Okay. So just so I... Okay, so this is different than a tourniquet. Like we've all had blood drawn where the tourniquets, yeah. you know, the, the nurse yeah. will wrap the thing and then your vein starts popping out. Yeah. So there's a di right? So that, yes. there's a difference between what we're doing with a tourniquet versus the the anatomy and the sort of structure and function of the katsu band. So that's number one. And of course, I'm thinking about all the metabolic applications of this. So you think about, you know, when I think about the big four, right? The things that are gonna sort of get us in the end, it's like cardiovascular yeah. disease, cerebrovascular disease, type two diabetes, all of these things are going to show a, an attenuation in capillary blood flow, right? So even just as you're sitting here, I mean, there's so, there's so many vast applications just for the general population. If we're just passively having yes. a conversation as you and I are, and you have these, these blood flow band, these, these katsu bands on, there yeah. can be an improvement in capillary flow. And this is something I would, you know, um, this relates to oxygen saturation. Like yes. I used to have oximeters on all of my patients. Yeah. And I remember I, I was, I would only take new patients in at like kind of certain times of the day when I was in private practice. So I'd have them in, call it from like nine to 11. And then again, from like two to four, let's say. Right. Yeah. Um, and I remember there was this one patient I was doing an intake with, um, and their oxygen sat, it was 10 in the morning and it was 92%. And I was like, what the hell? is happening at 10 in the morning, like at 10 non-smoker, you know, yeah. young cat, yeah. like he was, I can't remember how much, how old he was now, like maybe 35, 36, something yeah. like that. 92% auction set at 10 in the morning. So, which is just for the listener, like yeah. you should always be above 98. Like it should be yeah. 98, 99, 100 all the time. Yeah. Like maybe as you get older, we start to see that level coming down a little bit in the evening, yeah. but a 35 year old should never have an oxygen saturation. Yeah. I did, I couldn't believe it. So I took it a couple yeah. of times just to verify that my oximeter yeah. wasn't like drunk. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I see so many, I see so many, yeah. like the short and sort of what I'm trying to get around to yeah. is I see so many applications for the general population just passively. Yeah. Um, but what I was, what I was wanting to talk about as well is how we can also use this in the gym. So, uh, men and women, but I told you, you know, kind of before we started my audience, primarily female, we got, we got some guys, I know there's some guys yeah. that listen to the show, maybe closet, uh, better podcast <laughs> listeners, but we have mostly women, uh, who are trying to, let's say in perimenopause or in menopause, yeah. 
figure out how they can improve their body composition, how they can improve their hormonal profile, certainly delay cardiovascular disease onset if, or avoid it altogether, type two diabetes, like mm. maintain a healthy metabolism. So let's talk a little bit about how we might think about using these katsu bands in the gym. Is it just for, so you've been sort of sitting here with it around your bicep uh, mm. and you mentioned push ups. So can we yeah. use, let's say around the arm or around the leg? Can we, is it sort of single joint movements that are best uh, where we see best yeah. outcomes or compound compound movements like squats, deadlifts, can we use it with those as well? You can use it with any movement, any exercise that you use in a gym or outside the gym. A absolute any. Now, depending on what you want, let's say when we have our young collegiate athletes, our our soldiers, our Olympic athletes, generally generally um, they want increased muscular size sort of an egotistical perspective, mm -hmm. but also strength. Mm -hmm. um, yes. We have some athletes, let's say ice skaters, um, uh, ski jumpers, uh, high jumpers, et cetera, that they don't want increased muscle size. They like want a runner increased, or something like, like yes. So, yeah. so there are many sports where weight um, maintenance is absolutely critical to your performance. There's many other uh, sports. I mean, the, you know, whether it's sumo wrestling or American football, uh, where size does matter. So depending on what you want to achieve, you can do both. So for example, if I wanted to increase my bicep uh, size, the key here would be to do the katsu um, as I slowly move the arm up and down. So you want to slow and you want to contract the muscle in both directions. When I reach failure, when, and right now, literally I can feel my, uh, my left arm actually building up. Lactate and you're not, you're not like right now, for those of you that are listening on audio, he's not using any weight. He is just no. literally doing a bicep curl with his hands, cl fist closed. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and I don't know if you, you can, I don't know if you can see you can see you're jacked uh, on that one. <laughs> yes. And, and I'm right handed. <laughs> yeah. And I'm right handed. Yeah, yeah. You know, so you can increase both, uh, you know, short term and long term this it, for muscle size, you can move it slowly. So, for example, if you had uh, I'll just pick a 35 year old woman, he she has two children and she just wants to get back into uh, shape. Let's in this case. So in, with the ideal exercise would be walking or a stairmaster, squats, et cetera, no, nothing weight bearing. So no, no, um, you know, bar on the back of their neck going up and down. Now, some women like the, and men like that feeling of, of holding a dumbbell or holding a barbell. Mm -hmm. In this case, we recommend just don't use the plates, just use the, the, the bar itself. We have. We have athletes at the highest level just using the bar where they normally would be leg pressing an incredible amount of weight. If they go slowly, they will increase muscle size. Now, if they go quicker, their heart rate is going to is going to be elevated, and they will be gaining uh, functional strength at the speed that they're going. So, for example, I, I mentioned a, a golfer golfer if they want to increase their club head speed they will actually be golfing driving at the speed that they normally do with the bands on so depending on what you want and and let's say uh let's say you want to run your first 10k run for the first time you have no idea how fast you want to go or your friend says hey i want to run you know faster than 40 40 minutes in my my 10k and you go okay so in this case, you would you could get on a treadmill. You, of course, you could run outside too, and you take your uh, your ideal pace time, let's say per kilometer, whatever it is. Take your ideal pace time. Put the bands on your legs, and put it on a little, just a tiny bit of pressure, and then you run at that pace for let's say a kilometer, rest, run at a kilometer, rest, etc. As you go through the season you increase the pressure incrementally. What you are effectively doing 
is you're teach you're giving more stress on your body in the same way that if you started to do high altitude training. So let's say you're mm -hmm. training at uh, sea level, you put it a little bit more pressure, you're training at, uh, let's say, 500 meters, let's say you put a little more pressure training at 1000 meters, by the time you actually finish your training, you are running at the same ideal pace at let's say 5000 meters now comes race day now your body is very prepared for a quick 10k run or cycling or rowing or whatever i mean we have lots of women who do this and they just love they take a boxing class you know once or twice a week that's just part of what they do or Kramaga or whatever they would like to do they put on the bands either on their arms or legs and go ahead and do whatever movement we do we have zumba people we have dance people you you name whatever the bands are are uh shaped and and uh, placed so there's complete freedom of movement on your arms or legs um, so you can do any exercise and depending on what you want to achieve muscle stamina muscle strength muscle size uh or the reverse there are some athletes especially let's say um uh, those who are in the combative sports, uh, MMA, boxing, wrestling, or dancers, um, ice skaters. You know, if you have pairs ice skating, you know, the, the man has to be pretty strong and the woman has to be fairly light and agile because one yeah. is lifting the other. We have acrobats, Cirque du Soleil people do it because they're doing certain movements, balancing, holding up someone. So all of these movements can be done with the bands, either on your arms or legs. Okay. So is this, when we talk about aerobic exercise, so you mentioned like a boxing class, Krav Maga, which is something I totally want to get into, by the way, just as a side note, I'm like, really, I, I have followed this Instagram account. I'm like, I have to learn how to do this. Yeah. But, uh, so we have like Zumba classes, dance classes, ballet, all the, is this, uh, would you wear the bands for more low intensity exercise or would you also wear it for like sprinting? and high intensity or super maximal intensity exercise as well, or just any kind? Any kind. So we do have the US track and field, especially our 100, 200, or 400 meter runners use katsu in, in the form of their training. So we have the, you know, at least in the United States, we had the fastest, fastest Americans using katsu, both male and female. Um, it's quite interesting because a lot of power of uh, people who do, um, who have to move quickly, that includes basketball players. That includes in the case of uh, our European users, uh, the German bobsledders. Here are big men who, and women who have to push a very heavy sled for about, you know, whatever, seven seconds and then get tucked in. All of those people use katsu in different ways, whether you're going, you're trying to move very quickly, like a baseball throw is very quick. A diver, we have um, high platform divers that are using it. They don't use the bands while they're actually diving, but they use it in their form of training. So they're trying to uh, increase their utilization of fast switch muscles. So whether that any kind of uh, uh, fast movement, but fast movement, you know, that's sort of reserved for your, for your athletes or people who are performing for something um, or your soldiers. Most of our users who tend to be older, tend to be working adults, retirees, et cetera, most of those people are not into uh, very high intense, high speed activities. For them, using the bands over the course of a half an hour, hour, doing gentle movements, uh, walking, um, this, is, this is ideal for them because they're sort of getting more bang or they are getting more bang for their buck when they have the bands on when their um, uh, uh, limbs are engorged in blood. So it, it, it runs a spectrum. Okay. So let's, so I like, I have a stationary bike at home. I'm probably on it two to three times a week. Uh, two of the times I'm doing like more of a zone two, zone three kind yeah. of like steady state yeah. uh, work. And then there's one uh, workout a week where it's like a zone five or six, where it's like uh -huh. all out sprinting, or it's just like an incredible amount of resistance over like a 20 minute or a 25 minute period. Yeah. So yeah. how, how would I change the way that I'm using the, and from, for, I'll tell you, my goal is just like cardiorespiratory fitness. I'm in my forties. I want to make sure that as I transition through, you know, I'm in perimenopause right now, as I'm in move through menopause and beyond, I just want to be like peak 
as you know, peak for my age and also be yeah. able to maintain my energy to run after my kids and do all the things that I love, love to do. Yeah. So would, would there be a, a different way? And, and I'm assuming like with the bike, let's say they would be around, like the bands would be around my legs. Sometimes, well, sometimes weekly, me and my husband, we go, we play squash and we like to destroy each other. So I'm assuming like okay. the squash would be like around the arms. So how would I change the way that I'm using it? Would it be the amount of pressure that I'm, if it's steady state, is it, am I just like slowly augmenting my tolerance for the pressure over time? Yes. Yes. You're always, we, uh, um, how long are you on the, um, stationary bicycle? Did you say well, last miles? night was last night was an hour. So st when hour. it's zone two zone two, it's like, you know, an hour. And sometimes yes. if I am watching a really great show, it's 75 minutes, yes. but it's, yeah. you know, it's about an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the zone, but the zone five, six is like 20, 25 minutes. Yes. So, yeah. so in this case, and, and you can measure your wattage or your distance as you Yes. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I would take a, a, a three to six week program, if you will. And in the first week, I would just do what you're currently doing at a very low pressure. And that pressure would be pressure on for 30 seconds, pressure off for uh, five seconds, pressure on, pressure off. And what That's does what low I, mean? Is it is there like no, a... Yeah, we have a scale that goes from zero to 400. Um, okay. That's the scale. <laughs> it's yeah. It's, uh, uh, you know, when we, when Dr. Sato first did this, uh, back in the sixties, and then when he started to work with the scientists and physicians and, and other, you know, his other medical uh, colleagues, uh, he frankly just had bands around his arms and there was, there was no standardization of the, actually the pressure. So at the time he took literally a, um, you know, little meters that measure your, um, uh, what do you call it? Your, blood your pressure? air tire tube. No, not the blood oh, pressure, oh, your, your oh. air tire tube, because oh, oh, inside oh, right. there yeah. was a, there was a, there's a, you know, air bladder. Yeah, yeah. So he wanted to know what is the pressure on this air bladder. Mm -hmm. So that particular device that he used was zero to 500. Oh, okay. And, we, and, right. and that simply became the standard. It was, it was, somewhat related to PSI, uh, pounds per square inch, but not exactly. Um, and it, you know, it just so happened as we, as we dialed forward the evolution of, of the company, people were mixing up MMHG with our, what we call SKU standard Katsu unit. It just so happened that the numbers somewhat overlapped. And when we say something like, well, you know, you can get up to 300 SKU. Some people assume well, 300 Those millimeters SKU, of mercury. Yes. And that's like, well, that would be occlusion, yeah, you know, no. in a, in a surgical uh, tourniquet. And, mm -hmm. and we realized, oh, we, we made a mistake, but we didn't want to sort of reverse history there. Mm -hmm. So we go uh, zero to three, uh, zero to 400. Mm -hmm. Very rarely do we have some athletes and this would be you know, the velodrome athletes, it's, you know, they, on the side, they, they are sprinting all out for, yeah, I don't yeah. know, 30 Crazy to sport. seconds. Yeah. They, mm -hmm. they would be using something in the 350 to 400 during their sprint workouts, but in the buildup, you know, as they, as they're cycling around and sort of, uh, positioning with their, uh, uh, opponents, they would be using a much, much lower pressure, 100 to 250. So um, when when you want to go your your zone five, you would be going at a high, uh, you know, maybe two hundred and fifty to three hundred. But in this case, you will find that your perspiration uh, starts much quicker. Yeah. It'll be much more. Uh, everybody that uh, does katsu, we you know, they're they're using a lot of water, or they're going through a lot of water simply because metabolically speaking, it it's very taxing when you know, all of your capillaries are engorged in blood, especially in the lower extremities. You've got a whole lot of capillaries in your thighs and your glutes and your, and your hamstrings and your calves. So there's a lot of, of work that's being done by the vascular tissue, not only expanding, contracting with each heartbeat, just the total volume of blood in the lower extremities when you're doing katsu. But in that first hour when you're watching, you know, a movie or you're watching a TV or listening to music, whatever you're doing, that that can be and should be at this what we call the cut cycle mode, which is pressure on, pressure off, low pressure, 
it, it exactly dovetails with the zone two, zone three training. And, and someone who's experienced in zone, in all the different zones of training, they very much understand that the uh, use of the katsu pressure dovetails with those zone two, zone three, zone four, and zone five training. So it, it's a it's a very nice um, uh, augmentation of the training you're already doing. It would be like if you know you were at you know fifteen hundred or two thousand meters in altitude doing your same zone five. If you're at two thousand meters in altitude or you know roughly six thousand feet, and you're at zone five, you know that your heart is beating <laughs> much quicker. It's much more taxing on you. So probably you wouldn't be able to go 25 minutes of zone five, maybe that would be 12 minutes or 10 minutes, but you will find that your heart rate, uh, you'll even find that your SpO2 would go, you know, if it were 99, you would immediately uh, see it peak at 100%, immediately. Wow. And, be and because you have all that, I, and I took off the band, so you can see how my, my hand is now uh, returning. Is returning back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But but right now, uh, there is still a slight pink glow, and that's because the capillaries of my hand and my arm have remained elastic. It takes a while for it to go back to its, its uh, uh, homeostasis. So during that period of time, as you can imagine, when my vascular tissue is expanding more, it's requiring more energy. And therefore, right now, you know, my my left arm is re simply requiring more energy because my vascular tissue is more expanded than my right hand. And so when you're doing the zone five training, et cetera, it's a great time to sort of max out where you are because it it truly is if you're in a race, you know, when we all athletes train and they train very hard and even the Olympic athletes, they train at such a high level. But there's another level they kick it up in, in competition. And a lot of our Olympic um, athletes and, and um, coaches who use katsu, they call katsu, when they're really, really intense, not race pace training, but race pain training. And the reason why is there's this certain level when you're you know, you're at the very, very peak and you're racing against somebody that you just, your body, your mentally, your mindset kicks you up another level. And it's discomforting. A lot of athletes call it race pain. What we like to call it is race pace. We want the body to be accustomed to that race pace, but also very importantly, be accustomed to the race pain. And therefore, not only is Katsu helping you metabolically, vascularly, muscularly, but also emotionally and mentally, because now on a daily basis, your body is training at that race pain level that you typically only see at in a competition. Now, everybody's not as intense as that, but some, you know, uh, type A personalities <laughs> like going to a, a high level, especially if you're, you know, you want to beat your husband in squash, yeah. you know, <laughs> What you want to I'm do? I'm glad is... you picked that up. Yeah. <laughs> I turn into a maniac when we play squash. I don't know what happens to me, but I have to hit that ball no matter what. Like no okay. matter how I dive in that little box that we're playing yeah. in. Yeah. So, so for example, in there, <laughs> not only in squash, you have to be quick. You have to react. You, your lateral movement, left and right, have yeah. to be good. Your your backwards and forwards movement have to be very good. So, cuts would be a, a good augmentation of what you do and what you could do especially if you, and, and I think the best way to judge someone like you, if Katsu is working or not, use Katsu for three months. At the end of three months, ask your husband, am I a better player now than I was three months ago? Mm -hmm. And he'll, he'll inevitably say, give me those bands. I need, I, we need to share these bands because yeah. you'll, your game will be just stepped up. Not only your ability to go left and right, backwards and forwards, the power of your, your, uh, yeah, of your, um, shots. In addition, the ability, and especially if you use it early. So we, all of our athletes use Katsu before they warm up. We want you oh, to be vascularly yeah. and metabolically prepared from the get-go. 
And, you know, whether it's a basketball game, ice hockey, whatever game it is, tennis, what have you, we typically, the coaches like Katsu because their team is ready when the gun goes off or the referee throws the ball or the, the ball goes out on the court. And, you know, when you can get a, a leap ahead of your competition, you know, not only is it physically, uh, you know, you physically uh, feel empowered, but you have that mental edge over the opponent, which hopefully can be sustained throughout the game or match or tournament, whatever it is. Awesome. Sorry, I get a very excited. I, I am so about- love. No, I love this. This is so fascinating. Okay. So let's talk about, let's come back to resistance training okay. for a moment. So okay. you mentioned, you know, if you squat, you know, if you have a bar, like a barbell squat, which is something I do often, I'll do bar, you know, deadlifts, that kind of thing. And I'll have like, you know, plates on the, on the, um, uh, on the barbell, your recommendation is to just do the squatting, let's say without any, is there, is there like, without any plates, is there like a hard and fast rule in terms of like the percentage decrease? So like, for example, let's say I can, I don't know, I can, what did I do last time? I think I did 150 pounds for 10 reps, let's say. So the barbell plus whatever it was on either side. Um, why are you telling me to take off now? Cause the barbell is like 45 pounds. So you're telling me to take off yeah. essentially a hundred pounds off of what yes. I'm my regular load. So why is, is there like a is there sort of an equation that I need to follow? So if I'm typically doing deadlifts at whatever yeah. weight, do I say, okay, I have to subtract this by 80%, 70% or is there a rule or is it just, just do the motion with the, with yeah. the cuffs on? There's no hard and fast rule. However, what we typically do for someone who, who does know the number of reps at the number of weight that they do it and they monitor that. I mean, most people know, okay, I do 12 reps of this at this weight, et cetera, et cetera. What we, what we encourage everybody to do is do one of those traditional workouts without katsu once or twice a week. So you, you, you can feel confident and comfortable. I can still do X exercise with X pounds or, or kilograms, you know, there. What is absolutely fascinating as you go into week three or week four, using the cuts method with just the barbell. And this is especially important for um, uh, older people. I'll say older is older than 35. As we get older, we want to more lengthen ourselves as opposed to, you know, have heavy weights on, on our spine. So especially in this case, continue that. That's not a problem. We, we, we're not encouraging anybody to stop what they're doing. We're encouraging people to look at Katsu to augment what they're currently doing. There are many NFL football players or many athletes there, especially the male collegiate athletes. They just love the smell of a weight room. They love the smell of dropping a weight. And we say, great, that's fine. Continue doing that. We would recommend if you want to get stronger and bigger or faster, whatever the case is, use Katsu with a higher pressure and a lower resistance because the muscle will be taxed even more with a higher pressure, with more engorgement of the capillaries, the capillary beds within the, uh, the bicep, tricep, forearm, or you know, on your lower uh, extremities, whatever it is, your muscle will be actually taxed the more, the more blood is flushed in the blood. And so if, and that will trigger a hormonal response. So at the end of the day, we, you sort of balancing, you know, my traditional means of lifting and number of reps, et cetera, with the sort of non-intuitive, absolutely non-traditional method of katsu, where we're increasing pressure and decreasing weight. But to answer your question directly, there's no hard and fast rule. We're just saying, Hey, if you don't need to put a heavy weight on your spine and and make stress, especially as you age, you can still maintain and increase your strength and size by just using, you know, the bar with an increasing amount of pressure with the katsu bands. And this is what we were talking about in the pre-chat. You were saying, you know, like the, what was your, it was like 90% of your customers are women. And then I think, did you say 70% of your women, the 90% or 70% of the 90% of your females are in the, is it 55 to 65? What was the age range? Yes. That? 
So nine. So we we're selling right now katsu in forty nine countries. Over ninety percent of those are female purchasers, and of of the total number of users, seventy percent of our total worldwide users are women between the ages of fifty and seventy five, and those are the women who you know if we if you think about how uh, those women lived in their teenage and college years. You know, back in the late 70s, the U.S. Uh, federal government issued a, a, a law, we, we call it Title IX, that enabled a lot of American universities to offer collegiate sports to women. Before that, you had all of your our best, all of the American best female athletes typically peaked in high school. And then they still went to college. They just wasn't any... Um, competitive collegiate sports for them or and there are certainly not any post collegiate um, uh, sporting activities or expectations at that time so we had a whole generation of women great athletes very active individuals who are not given the same um, opportunities that males traditionally have been given at least in the united states and you know, we now know if we look at contemporary uh, NCAA collegiate athletics, the American universities draw athletes from all over the world. I mean, we're looking at you know Europeans, Africans, people from Australia, Asians, South Americans coming to American universities because there's so many opportunities available. Those opportunities didn't exist until the late 1970s. Those women are largely in their 60s, 70s, and 80s now. Very athletic women, very active women. They just miss the opportunity of collegiate athletics. So many- And weightlifting, like weightlifting oh, was never a thing for no, women. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, you would never see a gym <laughs> with a coach, a male coach, coaching a bunch of junior high school and high school females. That just, that, that did not exist existed on the men's side. And so these women, very fit, very active, are now in their 60s, 70s, and 80s. They understand being fit. They understand being strong. They understand being toned. They understand that their body uh, chemistry changes as, as they get older. And they have to do, they have to work their physicality wisely. They don't need to lift weights because they were never introduced to weights, you know, in their youth. And now those women really, really appreciate the gentleness of katsu, obviously combined with safety, but very importantly, they look in the mirror, their girlfriends, their husbands, their family members, their daughters look at them and say, mom or grandma, you know, you got a body on you. Oh, kicking never... butt in your nineties. Yes. <laughs> your 80s, I mean, yeah. we have women who have told us they haven't worn short pants or a sleeveless blouse or shirt in decades. And what, what, we, what Dr. Sato taught me, what the cardiologist taught me, and what we strive to do every single day is bring a katsu smile. Do katsu, and we want you to end your katsu session with a smile. And when a woman in their 60s and 70s tells me, Steve, I bought a pair of shorts for the first time, or I'm, I went out, it's always hot and I wore a tank top and they're proud of their toned, you know, upper arm. And they, you know, they, they, this is the biggest, most appreciative smile I've seen. So that's what we try to do with Katsu. I love that. And so for, for me, one of the places, I think there's a few places where Katsu really shines. One is recovering from injury. So if someone's recovering from injury, we can sort of speed up the mechanisms as we were saying with the nitric oxide and the hormone cascade, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Um, and then someone who, as you said, you know, might be, maybe wasn't exposed to heavy weights or the weight room when she was younger. And so maybe she's worried about her technique or she's just simply seeking to avoid injury. So this is a way for her to build that, uh, an increase in it's muscle hypertrophy and it's, it's muscle. So I, for my understanding, hypertrophy and strength are two dis I mean, they often yeah. correlate with each other. Um, but hypertrophy is like literally an increase in the fiber size. We have more actin and myosin, let's say, and like, I won't bore everybody with all the nerdy details, but hypertrophy is like the muscle size gets bigger yeah. and then strength, uh, and certainly you can redirect me or add some color to this. There's sort of like 
mechanical strength and neurological strength from my understanding. So is katsu also, is it all three of those things? It's like the increase in the muscle size, which is leading to the hypertrophy of the muscle. It's also the neurological strength, so the ability to recruit. And then it's also the mechanical strength, like the actin and myosin. It's all of those things that's happening. It can be all of those things, depending on what the user would like to achieve. So we do work with some people who are into bodybuilding uh, or body sculpting in the case yeah. of, of females. We work with models who, um, you know, we think of models as these beautiful, gorgeous uh, male and female with beautiful faces and, you know, very shapely bodies. But actually, there are many models we work with. They're a hand model. They're a leg model. They, their their bread and butter is just one part of their body. Right, that right. is that is what they get paid for. And so for those individuals, it could be a woman's thigh, it could be her behind, it could be a man's shoulders. We simply work on that. We focus on that muscle. So for that particular muscle, you know, depend. They know their market. Their photographer knows their market. So what we do there is we do a lot of isometric holes or isometric pushes. And Let's that say, is going to lead to what? The hypertrophy. Uh, that would lead to a hypertrophy and then the shaping of the muscle. Uh, okay. Okay. Yes. And be because, uh, you know, usually these models, the, these body part models, uh, you know, they're usually uh, photographed. So the muscle is, is, is very uh, defined. Mm -hmm. So, and they know what the photographer and the sponsors that advertise what are looking for. So we actually work on the exact you know, oh, if it's like a man's on the exact shoulders, hole that it might on be the for exact the photo. Hole, yes. Right, right. They cool. literally have the bands at increasing pressure and they literally hold, you know, contract the muscle, relax, contract the muscle, relax, contract the muscle. Relax. That also works when we have someone, for example, who had a, a stroke or someone who had an accident and they're, they, whatever that, uh, let's say they cannot um, open a jar of, of, uh, I don't know, peanut butter, pickles, let's say or peanut butter. Pickles. Yeah. Yes, pickles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, are we talking pregnant women? <laughs> I know my so, audience, <laughs> it's women, pickles and peanut butter. That's where they okay. are. <laughs> okay. So let's say you're 70 years old, you have arthritic pain, right? And you, that's difficult. It hurts you to do that. So what we do there is we have, we ask the person to put the bands on, don't do any turning yet. Just hold the, hold the jar, mm -hmm. do a little bit of turn, her, uh, turn it until you don't feel pain and you just continue to do that. So we have very many different protocols depending on what you want to achieve. It could be post-surgery, uh, especially an ACL tear, uh, hip replacement, yeah. um, uh, you know, uh, it could be simply as simple as tendinitis. We have a lot of uh, people, they could be carpenters. They can be estheticians who do a lot of waxing. Uh, they could be people in uh, nail salons who are doing this all day. Uh, we have a lot of dentists who use katsu. A dentist is always sitting in a very unusual position all yeah. day long. Chiropractors and, are the same. Yep. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And so those healthcare professionals, they're helping other at the same time, you know, they're, they're placing their body in a different, in an unusual position. So yeah. in those cases, we literally have the dentists, the chiropractors, the uh, massage the therapists, et cetera, using katsu as they are actually doing their, their uh, service. It could be, you know, whatever. It could be a, a dental procedure. It could be a massage. It could be a waxing. Uh, you name it. We have these people do it, especially people who are doing a lot of standing with their, uh, in, the, in the performance of their duties. And so in, in this cases, they would have the bands on their legs, very low, low pressure, just perfusion, release, perfusion, release, perfusion, release. And at the end of the day, they're not exhausted. Their feet don't swell. Their, their legs are not exhausted as they were before. Now, they're not using it for the entire eight, eight hour, 10 hour day, but they're doing it in, in let's say, the first hour and maybe the last hour, whenever they're tired. So, so the dentist, let's say, who is in these awkward positions all day long, are we, what the objective there is to improve strength or is it endurance and stamina? 
of the muscles? What, what are, what's the objective there versus someone who's like a model where you're contracting and trying to drive hypertrophy? Yeah. So for those professions where you, you cause ache and aches and pains because of the body position in there, we're, we're aim and this is why they're using a low pressure in there. We're just increasing the, um, the perfusion of blood in the working muscle. And these are the case. And this actually, what, what Katsu in low pressures actually leads to is a secretion of beta endorphin. A beta endorphin is a pain mitigator. So, you know, th these are the things that we, we don't want, we don't want an acute high pressure, high intensity Katsu in these cases, in these cases, when someone is standing, you know, all day long, uh, it could be a, you know, security guard, it could be uh, what have you, you know, I, there's all kinds of, of examples, but in the case of a dentist, uh, a chiropractor, et cetera, they could be using it on their legs in, let's say, the first hour, enabling their uh, tissue to expand and contract. Just like I, I think you can see even here, it's been over a half an hour since I took off the bands. I, there's still a pinkness mm -hmm. to my hand. And, and my left hand, it's still the vascular. In, in general, about nine, it takes about 90 minutes for the vascular tissue to return to where it was before katsu. So that's all that that's, that's increased. If I put a, a pulse oximeter on my finger, you'd probably have a 90, 98, 99, 100 on this finger. And you probably have, you know, 1% lower on this hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's talk about the hormonal cascade. I think okay. we mentioned nitric oxide a little bit, um, mm -hmm. but let's talk about, um, let's talk about what happens hormonally. Uh, so we have this pressure. It's either that cyclical pressure that you were talking about. Maybe it's an isometric, you know, depending on the yeah. goal. Um, yeah. tell me the hormonal cascade, tell me the mechanism of action. So there's a signal up to the brain and then what happens from there. And then, uh, in the case of a human growth hormone, uh, you know, a, a molecule that allows your, your muscle to get more toned or stronger or bigger, that's actually released by your pituitary gland that sits right behind your eyeball. And so that the, the signal, this, this stress on your muscle, either upper body or lower body or core, whatever it is, that sent that signal is sent to the brain and the brain, the pituitary gland thinks, oh my gosh, my muscle, my bicep, my hamstring, whatever it is, is working out, we need to send out a growth hormone to actually help the, the muscular tissue uh, repair itself, but it's not being damaged, there's only microtrauma, recover basically from the, the exercise. That uh, hormone is actually secreted by the pituitary gland, and then that goes through the vascular tissue. It actually travels through the entire body, and when, so in the case of my right arm that did not have the katsu, it would just continue flowing right through. When it got to my left arm where I did have the katsu on and I did build up some amount of lactate, then that hormone would go to the cells where, and each cell has a receptor, and go, oh, you just worked out. You just put stress on, on the body. And then the hormone does, does you know, uh, uh, metabolically what it, it normally does. And so that's, that's the process of, of how you have this bands inflated on your arms lead to this cascade of hormones. Now, not all of the hormones are produced by the brain. Some of them are produced by our internal organs like IGF-1, for example. And so this is why we see a lot of people, a lot of soldiers, especially, they're using katsu for an injury that they had, and then they go back and they go to their doctor's office, and all of a sudden their A1C levels are falling, their hemoglobin A1C levels are falling. And the doctor says, ah, you know, I'm glad you're eating better. I'm glad you're exercising more, whatever the case is. And then the you know, soldier says, Well, I'm doing, I'm eating the same, I'm eating in the barracks or wherever they are, but I'm doing katsu. And then that is why in the non-civilian population, so our, our non-civilians uh, who are using katsu, that's why we're picked up uh, uh, so popularly by the U.S. Department of Defense. Okay, so we have increase in human growth hormone, IGF-1, maybe an improvement in glycated, or as you said, H hemoglobin A1C. 
Yeah. Um, do we see any augmentation with things like testosterone, estrogen? Okay. <laughs> yes. So um, that is very exciting for us. It's very exciting for the Department of Defense. It's very exciting for um, uh, spouses who have undergone undergone a death of a of a spouse or a child, uh, especially on the male side with a decrease of in testosterone. There's all kinds of, of um, uh, issues that lead to that. Um, as one of the uh, military doctors told me that, you know, we have some soldiers with the uh, testosterone level of a five-year-old girl, mm -hmm. and that leads to problems. Yeah. So with katsu, we, in, the, in these cases, we have the soldiers use katsu intensely. We want them to actually build up a very, um, uh, to use katsu vigorously. So in this case, they would generally use a high pressure. They would generally be uh, doing something quite vigorous. It could be lifting weights, push-ups, burpees, um, you know, running on an obstacle course, whatever, whatever the case is. And then this actually leads to a, a very significant um, secretion or production of uh, testosterone. We all, uh, it, along with that, that would come with adrenaline. Uh, typically, the the uh, soldiers who have a low a testosterone level uh, suddenly they are the ones who after a very hard workout have these broad katsu smiles why because they feel you know i use this word uh figuratively they feel macho they finally feel macho and that brings a smile to the face they feel good it's a it's a hormonal response to katsu that's helping their testosterone levels increase on the estrogen level the same thing we have women postmenopausal women 56 to 60 years old, who have gained their periods back, their menstrual cycles have returned. Now, that's both a good and bad thing from what they tell me, but they go to their doctors and their doctors give them all kinds of tests. You know, what they're looking for something that's wrong. They call me and I said, Well, wait a second, you're nothing's wrong with you. <laughs> you're just uh, hormonally speaking, going back in time. You, you went through your body's, uh, you know, usual. Uh, stages of, of life, then suddenly at the age of 56 or 58, whatever age you are, you start doing katsu. Well, because your body is producing the hormones that, that uh, enable the body to go through a menstrual cycle, it's starting again. And, you know, they sort of say, ah, that's really good. Uh, but, you know, sort of, <laughs> but I have kinda... my period again. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, right. So, so yeah. we, we see these very, uh, unheard of results that we had heard about in Japan or that I, when I was living in Japan, I was studying under Dr. Sato and the cardiologist. We saw this all the time. We, we treated comatose patients, quadriplegics, people with TBI, traumatic brain uh, injuries. It was uh, cerebral palsy. It was remarkable what I was seeing in front of my own eyes. And I was saying, how, how is this happening? The doctors were, you know, were explaining to me in Japanese when I then when Dr. Sato and Dr. Nakajima and the others said, okay, Steve, you, you, you know enough. I translated enough of the Japanese um, protocols, applications, science, et cetera, into English. Then we were ready to roll it out here. And it, it was literally too good to be true. And so I just started working with athletes in the very beginning. But athletes have mothers and grandmothers. And over time, it was the as the, the male athletes were increasing in terms of usage, the usage of, of their mothers and, and aunts and, and grandmothers just exploded, just went off the charts. And it was simply because, in general, working women are incredibly busy. They have, especially if they have children, is you can probably very much appreciate there's there's an increasing demand on your time at a time when you sh you ideally you're exercising a lot and katsu allows you these bands i can't tell you the number of households where these bands are are used by women who are folding clothes or vacuuming who are take who are taking care of their children who are pushing their their young children in a in a baby cart i mean it's it's a way we call double stacking where the woman can 
really pay attention and focus on our own health in the service of taking care of her children or family members, or even her, you know, her aging parents. So, um, you know, these are things that women are coming back to us and say, ah, you know, I, I didn't believe you, but you know, I, I'm not, like I said before, I'm, I can wear a tank top in the summer. Um, I'm no longer, you know, I no longer have these, you know, flabby arms or, you know, I, I, I can't open that jar of, of pickles. So, um, or, you know, there are many women who said, you know, I'm, I'm able to, you know, put on mascara easily instead of, you know, um, th those fine motor movements are, are quite difficult for, for a lot of older people. And, and, you know, being able to put on mascara, being able to, to, um, you know, play and sit down on, on, on the floor and play with your grandchildren. Uh, is is so satisfying and and that's why i it always come back to that katsu smile we want to see those katsu smiles on on all of our users and is there any do we know if there's any effect on um the immune system um so you've talked about you know all of these different hormonal changes it sounds like we have an increase or a decrease, let's say, in in systemic inflammation. We have an improvement in looks like sex hormone composition and human growth hormone. I would also imagine um, with the musculoskeletal system, you know, we always think I always think about the musculoskeletal system, immune system, and reproductive system sort of all together when they're functioning. When one is functioning well, it tends to be the case that there's some spillover into others. And you've already mentioned, you know, the katsu system. We've yeah. seen an improvement in the reproductive function, or at least, a, you know, a, an eight or an anti-aging effect. Let's say in the reproductive. Yeah. Do we see any spillover into immune function? You know, having just gone through a pandemic and the whole world and all the thing, immune system tends to be a topic of interest, uh, or at least some type of prevention or making ourselves, you know, and we're more vulnerable as we age, right? Absolutely. Like that was one of the biggest predictors of prognosis with COVID is your age, yeah. right? Age and yeah. metabolic health. So, uh, do we see any improvements or have there been any research looking at improvement in, uh, cytokines, natural killer cells, macrophage, like any, any, like the sort of natural, um, or innate, I know that they, like the two different branches of the immune system or any immune function in general. Yeah, so uh, we've done, uh, there's actually work from California to New York to Florida right now on our long COVID patients with Katsu. Um, and so because these research projects are literally ongoing, they're, they're more, they're very long-term projects because we have, you know, unfortunately these patients who have been uh, you know, they have uh, chronic fatigue, brain fog. Um, a lot of them, you know, are largely um, bedridden and, and other things. So this is a long-term project. We believe it is. Anecdotally, we've seen it. But before I make a broad statement, yes, for sure, I want to make sure that these uh, physicians and scientists can actually put a paper out to say, yeah, definitively it is. But I, I share your opinion also when you have, you know, uh, let's say these, these three systems in, in your body, two are improved. It makes all the logical sense to believe that the immune system, and then there are certain ways that we can measure that for sure. Uh, T cells, mTOR, you know, you name it, um, which we've all doc, which the Japanese documented two, two decades ago, but you know, it's really um, the COVID pandemic has has placed uh, our entire society in a in a different place, and it, it hit m some people very hard, and that's why um, uh, physicians and and in in the case of in the United States, some state governments have reached out to us and said, "Hey, can we try your stuff with this this uh, cohort of of patients?" And we said, oh, "Great, you know." We'd love to do that. And so the, we are actually, um, those tests or those uh, research projects are undergoing right now. Okay, great. So we can, when we do have an answer to that, we'll make sure we'll update the show notes and, and maybe paste a, a link to the, when, to the paper when it comes out. Um, I will email you to you immediately. Amazing. Thank you. Um, is there any, is there any risks? So, I mean, it does really sound like such an amazing product. And it, you know, just for my listeners, I haven't tried it yet, but I am very interested in, uh, in picking up some katsu. And I, I was saying to you in, in our, 
exchange or email exchange, yeah. you're going to help me choose which one I need to, because there's yeah. a couple of different models, which we'll talk about in a moment. Yeah. Um, but is there any risks? Like, do we have any risks of blood clots or muscle damage or is there, I mean, I'm just sort yeah, of pulling yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. Is there yeah. any risks at all to, to cat sues? To- yes. There's, there's always risk when you don't follow the, uh, the standard protocol. So for example, y- you can use it, um, uh, uh, you can use it too high a pressure. You could do it for too long, and you could do both those things at high altitude. What generally would happen is, and and you can imagine, um, we only use it on our arms or we only use it on our legs. Some people, for some unknown reason, they put it on their arms and their legs at the same time, and then they go for a run. So you so should imagine, never do that. You should only never, have ever do that. So but it's just some, one or the other, one limb, upper one arms extremity or okay. upper legs. Okay. That's it. Okay. So two arms or two legs. Some people say, well, I want to be more efficient. So I went out running with my two arms and my two leg bends on. They didn't do the cut cycle mode. So pressure on pressure off. They just put the bands on 400. <laughs> yes. And what happens, and you can right. imagine, you saw how red my, my yeah. hand got, and I was using a mild pressure. Mm-hmm. So now they have an abundance of blood mm-hmm. <laughs> in all four limbs. We only have a, an X amount of, of liters of blood in our entire body. And suddenly they get lightheaded. Mm-hmm. The thing that's going to happen is they could faint. And the last thing we want people to be doing is if they're especially if they're running outside is faint in the street or on the curb and right. something like that. So more the 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 most likely thing that would happen is a a, a fainting effect which which is what the body does. It it faints then all of a sudden the blood um uh you know goes back to the uh, the brain as, as uh, nature intends but we want to avoid that. So uh the chances of getting a clot um we, uh, that's why we did the 10 year study with those 12,000 patients. Uh, yes. What was the was, result of that? That was my, on um, one of my notes here to come back uh, to it. What was the, so what was the, the finding? number, the number one finding was Katsu is safe. The number one finding the Japanese were even doing, uh, you know, there was done by cardiologists. So they were taking people, wheeling them out of the operating room and then putting the armbands on immediately after enhancing. So Basically, what we're doing is we're increasing the elasticity of our vascular tissue. That's what we're doing fundamentally. That's that's the goal number one. And so when you increase the elasticity of vascular tissue, the probability, not zero, but the probability of having a clot goes down. And the cardiologist wanted to demonstrate that. And with that demonstration, then, you know, uh, uh, legally, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, legally and, and uh, uh, medically, they said, hey, as long as they're doing this cut cycle, as long as they're using the pressures you know, that we recommend, not doing something crazy like putting up a maximum, uh, then uh, we're safe. So that was the number one. And number two was they actually demonstrated um, uh, scientifically uh, increase uh, muscle strength, activity, you know, all, all the things that we spoke about. And there was there were hundreds of papers that were produced over that uh, uh, 10 year period uh, by this team at the University of Tokyo Hospital. And do we see any uh, increase in so one of the things that um, whenever I'm doing my blood work, I'm always told like, lay off the weights for a couple of days before because your LDL levels are going to go up, your creatine kinase levels are going to be up because of that, you know, it's usually a measure measure of uh, muscle breakdown. Do we, do we know if our CK levels, are they comparable uh, or any different to working out uh, compared to people who are working out without restriction? Are they the same? Do we know anything like that? Or is there no they, data? On they're, that? they're generally much lower because you're not creating the micro tra- uh, trauma of tearing the muscle fiber. And that now, of course, if you're lifting the same amount of weight with katsu, that would actually increase the, the right, right. micro trauma. Right. That's why we recommend that you either doing, you know, body weight exercises or you're doing light weight, like with a bar, no plates with katsu. You're, you're getting the benefits of, of uh, strength training, but you're eliminating that the micro trauma of the muscle tears. And this, 
This is especially true for males who tend to lift heavy. And, you know, lifting heavy, you know, if you look at what Arnold Schwarzenegger did when he was in his 20s and 30s, drastically different than what he's doing in his 60s and 70s. And so we want to, what we want to tell people is, hey, whatever your level of uh, fitness, strength, uh, mobility uh, is now, we want you to maintain that level, at least that level, 10 years in the future. So if you're, you know, 41 now, then at the, this level of activity, fitness, um, flexibility, mobility, et cetera, should be the same or better when you're 51. I'm 61. My goal with Katsu is to have that my same level of stamina and strength at 71. Now, at some level, it's going to decrease, but at least we're, that is the goal and that is the um, intention of Dr. Sato. When the, Dr. Sato is now 76, it, he is such an incredibly fit man who doesn't use, I mean, he uses the, the bar. Um, and if he does, if he does uh, do a weight training workout, he just puts the, the, the pin on the top, uh, the top plate. Mm -hmm. And you look at his arms are just incredible. You look at his waist, it's narrow. You look at uh, the number of um, uh, stair masters that he can do over a period of 20 minutes. And it's unfathomable. And he just, he explains, he goes, I, the purpose of Katsu and our patent is, is exactly on this. The purpose of Katsu, the real purpose of Katsu is to increase the strength of the uh, elasticity of vascular tissue. If you do that, all these other uh, downstream effects occur. And so tell me about the different models. So I was looking on the website prior yeah. to our call and I was getting a little bit confused. So walk yes. me through, there's like a right. basic and there's a standard. So tell me yeah. what the differences are and then help me choose which one I need to okay. be getting. <laughs> so, so we have a, a sort of a handheld model here. This actually, uh, it, it's called C3. Um, and the C stands for cycle. C stands for our third generation. We're now in the fourth generation. And this, this actual model was uh, the Navy SEALs actually helped us develop uh, this product. And it's, you know, it's, it's very touch screen. You sort of do all these, it's got all the ability to do all kinds of stuff. And, you know, you have that. It is connected to the bands with a tube. So when I connect here and I connect it to a tube, this, this is sort of our, our standard handheld model. And this is the standard uh, model. This is what is a standard is calling model. your standing. Okay. Yes. And yes. who is this? Who is standard for? What is standard for? You know, we use it in the military. Um, it, it, this is our most uh, popular model. It, you know, it's also our, our lowest cost model. And, you know, our, our prices are admittedly high, but, you know, it's, it's as low as we can drive them. I'm a consumer myself. Uh, I knew when I made this product, if my own parents and my own sisters would buy it, then... It, it's a viable product. And, yeah. and so the, uh, this is the standard model. So this is one with, with tubes. And then this is what we call our, our next generation. So this, this um, control unit here has a battery, a uh, uh, circuit board, and a compressor. The battery is, is telling you the, uh, is giving you power. The circuit board is is sort of the brains behind it. it, has all the algorithms, and the compressor is pushing the air in and out of the bands. The B series or Bluetooth series, it all of these things in here in the handheld unit are actually included on the band itself. And then this uh, thing, so there's no tubes to this. So there's the advantage of putting this on your arms or legs without any tubes. So okay. here you have to be connected by tubes. Here you have no tubes. And the um, B series, it's actually, if I turn my, my phone on, um, we have a app. And so on the app, we have the, the, uh, uh, all of the instructions of here. You can, you can here measure and you can control here. the pressure and the signal. Control the pressure. Okay. Everything, it's, everything's here. Mm -hmm. And you can share that data with your teammate, your trainer, your coach, your healthcare professional, 
whoever it is. And so we have a lot of um, soldiers or people who are on professional teams, et cetera. They, when that, when their trainer or coach says, Hey, I want you to do katsu at least a half an hour, you know, after workout, whatever the coach can know through yeah. the app. Okay. John did it, but Peter didn't. And so, um, that's what, that's what this, this does. Okay. So, so they're both difference. exactly the same. Just one is tubes. One is not tubes. Not one tubes. collects information. One doesn't connect the information. And, and the one with oh, the, right. mm -hmm. the app, we can actually tie that to certain levels. So for example, you're we talking about the young man uh, that your young patient that had uh, SPO2 levels uh, at 92. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you can set either the healthcare professional or yourself can set different um, levels. Let's say I didn't want my um, diabetic, uh, type two diabetic patient who's, who's overweight to do katsu under 94% SPO2, let's say, right. then I could set that on my phone and the bands would automatically stop if he or she, uh, uh, he or her um, SPO2 levels fell below 94%. Or let's say it was a person with um, uh, cardiac issues. And I said, don't do katsu if your heart rate is above 120 beats a minute. And so the uh, the Bluetooth model would automatically shut off if the person reached 121 beats per minute. So there are certain uh, safety protocols. There's some programmatics we, that you can build yes. in if you're a clinician for your yes. for your patient. Your patient. Okay, awesome. And then, um, and then do, the bands. Is it like you have to? And just because I'm as a consumer, and I'm, I know that there's people listening that are going to have the same questions. So you can buy the arm bands, the leg bands, or does it all come in a set? Like, how does it work? Yeah, in terms it all, of it all comes in this, in, in one case, so you get two arm bands, two yeah. leg bands, and then the control unit. Yeah. And then in addition to that, you, you have all the access to, you know, our online education program or, or oh, that was the other question. It, yeah. Is there, are there, so if I say, Hey, my, my goal is hypertrophy, yes. right? there's going to be a hypertrophy program, let's say built into the app or built into the online portal that yeah, maybe people have. It's access not in, to. it's not in the app yet. Uh, because, uh, the, the span of humanity that we, we address their spectrum of requests is, is too yeah. large yet. We're in the right. process of that, right. but we have, we have it online. We have a course we call Katsu 101. Mm. And in there you can go to the, you know, uh, muscle strength building, um, you know, rehab of, of, uh, connective tissue rehab of a broken bone. You can go to different chapters mm -hmm. and then look at the recommendations we have in addition. And we, this is what I do all day long as you know, everybody else in the company or some people in the company, um, they have specific questions. I bought it and, um, uh, I see these advantages, but my husband, he's, you know, He's 52, he's a smoker, he's not in shape, but you know, he saw how healthy I'm, uh, I'm getting and I'd like to start with him. What do I do? And in this case, uh, we answer each and every person by email and, and, or, or we get them on phone. And in addition, every uh, Tuesday and Thursday, we have uh, what we call webinars for the newcomers. Someone just bought it. I have no idea what to do. I don't, I don't even know where do I plug in this, uh, right, right. you know? And so because most of our users uh, year by year, our, our average age is going increasingly higher and higher. And then with our new Bluetooth series, you know, we're, we're asking our, you know, 70, 80, 90 year olds to use an app. We literally go through the app with the individuals, um, or, or a handheld unit and, literally take them through, you know, this, you do this, and then you do that, and then you do this, et cetera. So, you know, we're, we're very patient with, uh, uh, users. We know this is a very radical and innovative way to look at, um, health or rehabilitation, longevity or strength, um, improvement. So, you know, we're very patient with everybody and, and, uh, male, female, young, old, able, disabled, you name it. I love that. So tell people where they can find the bands, where they can purchase them, how they can interact with you or, yeah. or the company in general. Yeah. Just, just go to www.katsu, K-A-A-T-S-U.com. Some people joke with us that Katsu, I've eaten that. 
Yeah. So <laughs> that one is only with one A, Katsu, K A A T S U dot com. We'll have uh, hopefully all the information that you need. And if you have something that we haven't answered yet online or through this uh, podcast, you can always email us at info, I N F O, at Katsu dot com. Steve, this has been really an awesome conversation. Um, I, when I was preparing for this, I was like, you know, I've heard about it a little, I heard about it in sort of the rehab world in terms of, yeah. you know, like I remember this patient with this ACL injury, like I was saying, but you've really just through the process of this conver conversation and my prep in terms of the science, um, that supports a uh, BFR in general. And now that I understand a bit more about the distinction between BFR and Katsu and the cyclical component to it and the, me the mechanisms of the bands and how they're different than let's say the Amazon, cause you can go on Amazon and pick up some BFR bands for, yeah. I don't know, 40 bucks, 50 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just really just wanted to thank you, um, for this has been a fascinating conversation. I know it's going to help so many of my women cause it's right in that demo, right? It's right in that yes. demographic of yeah. the, you know, 35 to call it 65 woman, who's trying to figure out like why things aren't working for her the way that they did and how she can sort of regain uh, efficiently sort of regain some of the strength or the vitality, the energy, you know, the mental resilience and the grit that she once had. So thank you so much for your time today. It's been awesome. Uh, my pleasure. And, and please um, take care of your husband on that racquetball. Tour. <laughs>